Okay, let's have a class, and uh, uh, we will do a numeration bacteria today. You spread the plate. Okay, so we call numeration of bacteria in a gross solution. So the plan is that we will do a spread plating today. And then we do pore plating next Tuesday. And we will do a bacterial agar media uh, recognition on Thursday. So it's well planned for three labs. And the fact sheets is right here. Now, before we talk about this, I would love to go over briefly the results of what you did before the unknown, which is, a, so I'll say results review. So very simple, number one, you have a slant. Is that right? How do you know the bacteria is growing there? Obviously, you see zig, zag, marker. That means the bacteria is growing there. Okay, now number two, you get a bross. I say I'm keep this bross for about a, a week. Let's see what happens. There is a three markers for a bacteria growing there. Number one is the lots of you are gonna see right now is a lots of pre precipitation at the bottom. So it is precipitation. Precipitation. Or we say sediment. That is a number one bacteria growing there. Number two, you will see possibly is if you shake it, you will see the whole tube is become cloudy or turbidity. So we say turbidity or cloudy. Number three, sometimes you will see bacteria stack on the top. So we call it a pellicles. Uh, that is usually is a streak aerobic bacteria, which means the bacteria needs a pellicles, P E. Bacteria uh, usually need oxygen, okay? So here is a question. You know the bacteria is in the broth media, like what we have here. Now the question will be, how many bacteria in there? And we learned in the lecture, there is a several methods we can do. We can measure the turbidity. And we can using a cell culture chamber to count the cell number. But all those methods, we will not know the bacteria is viable or non-viable, which means are they really survive or not. So today's methods will tell you really how many bacteria are there. That is why we call it some methods called spread plating. So there is a first question. I had a bacteria culture. Let's say E. coli. <coughs> Growing 35 degrees Celsius, 24 hours. Now, very simple. We can say lots of bacteria there. How many? Can you guess how many? Over yesterday is a lot. This is approximately 10 to the eighth cells. So what we should do is spread the plating. Lots of people say spread the plating is easy. We are going to just pick the bacteria in here, in another place. Then we using a spreader to do the spread. Is that right? We're going to add 0 0.1 ml there, then do the spread. Is this going to work? Obviously not. You will see a big chunk of smear there. 
and there is a no single colony which means there is a no single colony forming units that is called CFU that is what we need because when we have a colony there we can count it like you count an apple one two three four five six seven if we have a big chunk of smell we can't do that then how we should do it. we have to do is tenfold or a hundredfold C area dilution. This is the same thing learned in your chemistry class. So how are we gonna do? We're gonna make it you simple. Today we will do a hundredfold C area dilution because it's the first time you do. So you had a culture. Okay. It is growing 35 degrees Celsius 24 hour in a neutron broth, E. coli, 35 degrees Celsius, 24 hour. It looks like this. Remember, the first thing what you do before you do is shake. Because otherwise, all the bacteria at the bottom, we call it a sediment precipitation, so you have to shake. Sometimes it's on the top, so make sure it's shake. In the lab, you know, we have a research lab, I have a vortex, we can do a vortex. Here, we don't have that, so we do the shape. Okay, now the second time we're going to do is a hundred fold the CRM dilution. How do you do this? We will have a lots of the dilution tube. The dilution tube is right here. These dilution tube, each of them is 9.9 .9 ml. Zero point one percent neutron broth. Now, why do we do zero point one percent neutron broth? It is a buffered solution. The pH is around 6.5 to 7.2. It's a buffer solution. So bacteria will not be cause osmotic damage. So that's the solution what we use. How are we gonna do it? You're gonna pick, pick 0 0.1 ml. That equals 100 microliter from the original neutral broth E. coli solution. <coughs> then you mix it very well, shake, mix very well. I would suggest you shake 15 seconds. And then you pick another 0 0.1 ml from the first tube, go to the second tube, and shake another 15 seconds. Then the last one, pick 0 0.1 ml, go to the last tube. Shake and mix very well. Now here gonna be the question. What is the dilution factor of the tube? The first one is 10 to the 2. The second one is 10 to the fourth. The last one is 10 to the fifth. Okay, now here is gonna be the question. Here gonna here here, here gonna be remaining there is a question. When we add onto the agar plates. We are adding 0 0.1 ml there. We are not add 1 ml, because add 1 ml is too much. It is not 1.0 ml. It is 0 0.1 ml to the spread plate. So, what is the final dilution? 
factor of plates. Oh, so sorry, this is six. Of plates. That will be 10 times more than the tube dilution factor. So this one, the first one will be 10 to the 3. The second one will be 10 to the 5. And last one will be 10 to the 7. And this is what we need to do. OK? Then from each of these tubes, we're going to go ahead to do a spread plating onto each of the other. Now, here is a question. We said that before we do anything, what we should do is a label. So, you have those three other plates. You always remember the first thing label at the bottom. What are you going to label? Label is a final dilution factor of the other plates. That will be 10 times more than the tube dilution factor. So the first one is 10 to the 3. Of course, this is E. coli. Write your initial there. Write your bench number. The second one is 10 to the 5. And the last one is 10 to the 7. OK? Now, here is the thing. When you use pipette tips to do the dilution, pipette tips needs to <coughs> change between dilution tubes. So pipettes one, take it out, have a new one, take it out, have a new one. And then we're going to use another tips to add the solution into these other plates. Only need one pipette tips, which is 100 microliter to add a solution into the other plates. And you always going to, to do is from high to low dilution. Why? Because when you use the tips right here, you add it. You don't have to switch it. You can directly go here to add a second one. Then go here to add a third one. The reason is even you carry on a bacteria from 10 to the 7 to 10 to the 5, you carry only a limited residue bacteria. So when you add always from high to lower dilution, use only one tips. But some of you said, I'm going to do an opposite way. Can you do that? Yes, you can, but you have to switch tips all the time. Because otherwise, you are going to carry a lot of bacteria from higher to lower dilution. The so number will not be accuracy. Now, there's another question. We're going to use a spreader to do the spread. How we spread it? You spread is always from high to low dilution. Only one spreader. Okay? Now, after you spread, we will do all these plates is 35 degrees Celsius, 24 <coughs> hour incubation. And you will see what happened is 10 to the 3 is a big chunk. We usually to say it's a TNTC, too innumerable to count. 10 to the 5, you started to see some of the colony there, but it's still too much maybe. 10 to the 7, 
you will see a very good isolated colony forming units, CFU, colony forming units. And we want them in the legal acceptable zone, which is 30 to 300 CFU per plate. Because if the number is less than 30, we will say it's maybe a cross-contamination. When the number is more than 300, it's way too much. You can't count it. So we want this legal number zone is 30 to 300. OK? So this is what we have for talk about the dilution. Same as before, I'm going to show you how to do it. So I want everybody is still going to the front right here and uh, I'm going to show you how to do uh, uh, spread plating okay so I'll be just right here so we have a spreader we're using three dilution tube and we have a bacterial culture so we need a tips so we need a pipette down and tips and we have some tips right here we have a three other plates right here okay so these are the things we have to be prepared. So what do you need to prepare? Of course, you need to wear the gloves. That's the same thing. And by the way, this is will be done by each of you individually, not to work as a pair, because I gave you experiences. First of all, tips, pipettes, agar plates. But we need a three. Okay. A dilution tubes right here, and we need a bacterial solution. Bacterial solution. You can use your own, or you can pick one from here. Right here, which is said EC, okay? First thing first is label. How we label? Label always at the bottom, not on the top. So use a Sharpie marker to label. Let's say branch top number one, initial E. coli, this will be 10 to the three. This will be the second. So we say 10 to the five. And this is the third, so EC and 10 to the seven. Then you flip it over like this. Now we move to here. I would love you to label the tubes. The tube is the first tube is 10 to the two. Then the second one is 10 to the four. That is tube dilution. Then the next one is 10 to the six. Okay, right here. Now, we are almost ready to do, and make sure this hockey stick, or we say spreader, plastic spreader, is, can be opened. That is important. Don't sit, think about all the agar plates are ready. Then you're ready, this is not, not come out. Okay, make sure it, is ready. It, it, it works. Okay, how are we gonna do? Ideally, you should still open the fire. But sometimes you cannot use, it's used or not used, it's up to you. But we will still open the fire. Turn on the fire, okay? So this is to make sure you have a larger space. Pipette guns, you know how to do it, is that right? At 100. This will be a 20 to 200 microliter pipettes. We set up at 100. If it's not 100, make sure it's at 100. So how to do? First thing first, shake about 15 seconds we don't have a vortex ideally should do a vortex so how do you do it flame absorb a hundred microliter go to the second tube flame and then this is a trash so we need a trash can uh ryan do you have a trash can yeah some people have, some, some desk doesn't have, you put it in here. Okay, now, when you have all these, when you finished, move it on the second rack, okay? Then we're gonna have to do is shake a little bit. Then from second, we add 0 0.1 ml and go to, uh, uh, so first go to the second one. So flame it and then we shake it. 
Now, make sure when you do this every time, you have to change the new tips. It's very important. Because otherwise, you are carrying on the cross contamination. And the tips is don't touch these tube, the tube sides. Okay? So we're going to do this. Now you move them back. Shake. Now we're going to add the uh, bacterial solution, diluted solution, into these plates. At this moment, your order will be 10 to the 7 right here, 10 to the 5 right here, 10 to the 3 right here. Is this order. And we are going to add is from high to lower dilution only one tips. So this is quite simple. Right there. When you go and put it there. The last one. Is right here. And we don't need that. So now we're gonna do a spread plating. How to do it? There are the several methods we can do. It's like this. One of the methods is like this. Then you take out a spreader. You do a spreader like this. Make sure it is averagely covered on the surface. Couple of times, back and forth, but don't damage it. Only one spreader from the higher to lowest dilution. The second. Then the third. So we do like that. And this is a very basic technique. This stay there a little bit. Turn off your bouncer burner. About two to three minutes. Then give it to TA, you flip it over. We need to do the incubation is flip it over like this because otherwise the moisture condensation will cause the damage of the colony forming unit on the surface. You will not see it. But this has to be dried a little bit, about two to three minutes. Also, if you see your plate surface is like this, the agar. Too much moisture. Use paper towel to take, it, take them off. Otherwise, this is another problem. It causes a whole damage. You won't see colony forming units. So what we expected is after incubation, the first place 10 to the 3 will not find any single colony. It's all messed up. 10 to the 5, we started to see some of the colony. 10 to the 7, we will see a very clear single colony. Then on next Tuesday, we'll talk about the calculation. How many bacteria are there? Okay, a little bit tricky, but I think it's going to be easy to figure out. So that's what we have. Now you go ahead to do by yourself.